chest up, shoulders back. This is Revival Fitness. And I have finally, FINALLY benched 315 pounds. I think in commie math, that comes out to about 143 kilograms. And by the way, if you guys are looking for the types of programs I used through my novice phase up until this point to finally achieve this, you can check them out in the links down below in the pinned comment and description. And this is something that has eluded me for a long time. I am not genetically blessed on this exercise, many of you guys are not either. For reference, the first time that I ever stepped foot in the gym, I naturally went over to the bench press. I flopped down on the bench, I did the empty bar, it seemed easy enough, and I decided to do 135. So one big plate each side. I unracked 135, it dropped down to my chest, I couldn't get it up, I was hip thrusting and flopping, my shoulders were popping. The only reason I'm here to tell you about this now is because I was lucky enough to have a bench press that had rungs from the top down to the bottom, so I was able to just finally hip thrust the bar back into the lowest set of rungs. If I was using a bench that only had the highest rungs available and I could not rack the bar from that low position, I don't want to know what would have happened, but it would not have been pretty. On that day, I acquired my bench press curse, and it has been a thorn in my side ever since. And I know a lot of you guys can relate to this as well. This is just a very draining exercise. More so mentally than physically. Because unless you're genetically blessed on this lift, it is very slow to progress. You're gonna hit a lot of plateaus, much more so than the typical lower body exercises. You go online and see things like 315 being hit, constantly. A 315 bench, in terms of what you see on the internet versus what you see actually in the real world, very, very different. I know my bench is not remarkable by fitness industry standards, and you know the comments down below are going to say, oh, well, I was doing this for reps in high school, bro. I hit this when I was 17. Oh, I did that in my first year of lifting, bro. I mean, 315, that's barely even impressive. I mean, if you walk into the average commercial gym, you might see one really, really big dude benching 315. The rest of the crew the guys are struggling in the range of 185 to 225. The beginners are around 135. That's where the vast majority of men are. So keep that in mind, guys. Do not be disillusioned by internet fitness culture that a 315 bench press is something that is normal. In terms of the overall gym context, it is well in the top 1% of lifters in general. I hate to break your heart, but I'm telling you this because I want to save you a lot of frustration and even potential injury. I have trained hundreds of people in person. I have coached dozens and dozens online since that point. The reality is, guys, for most men, roughly 300 pounds up to 315 on the bench press, that's going to be a lifetime goal. And even then, there is a significant percentage of men who are simply never going to bench press three plates aside. And some of you are going to get mad at that and say that I'm a doomer or a too black pilled or something. I'm being honest with you, okay? I know you guys like to watch these guys on here that feed you hopium for a living. I don't do that. Apparently, there are guys in the fitness space that claim that anybody can hit, not even 315, they say that anybody can hit a 405 bench press naturally. Sure. The fact of the matter is, the vast, vast majority of guys are gonna have to train and recover like it's their job. I would say for at least five years to really get near three plates aside. But even a lot of dudes who may look like they can bench 315, they may not even be within 40 to 50 pounds of that. And compounding that further is the fact that so many guys, once they actually do this lift, they're going to dive bomb the bar, bounce it off of their chest, if not outright hip thrust the bar up. So they're not even technically benching as much as they claim, but they got it on camera, so I guess it counts. And we're talking about guys that do lifting as a serious hobby or even a career, they're still going to struggle, even with their eating and training and recovery and everything, all on point. Even on gear, a lot of guys are going to struggle to bench three plates. The guys that are the run-of-the-mill gym bros, who come in and get a quick pump, go out every single weekend always getting drunk, if you don't have the genetics for this, my guy, you're going to struggle to hit 225. And 225 is one of the intermediate strength standards that I set. I say you are formally intermediate once you are at or very close to two plates aside on bench for at least one rep, three plates aside on the squat, four plates aside on the deadlift. Once again, I know that angers people because they say you don't have to squat bench or deadlift. Of course, you don't have to. 
but if your training overall has been effective, you're going to be able to hit those numbers without really doing those lifts very, very much. You do not have to be a so-called strength specialist or a power lifter to hit those numbers, guys. I believe without question that the vast, vast majority of men can hit a 225 bench press. You'd have to have some pretty significant genetic defects in order for this to not be the case, or you're just simply that scared to eat. In my experience, most men are going to hit their first major bench press plateaus as they kind of finish out their linear progression around the 185 to 200 pound mark. That's when I hit mine as well. So this may seem confusing because some guys hit 315 in high school, others take years and years and years, maybe even over a decade to hit it. Other guys are never going to really even sniff 315. The first thing we have to talk about here is genetics. And like any physical pursuit, your genetics play a big role in determining how far you can go. You can say I'm a genetic determinist and you'd be correct because I'm not full of shit. And the first area to cover here is arm length. So the lankier that you are, the farther you have to move the bar, even with wider grips. And this is why most power lifters you see are gonna take a very wide grip. And some guys with previous shoulder issues may have to take closer grips in general because wide grip is going to flare those things up. I've talked about before guys, a lot of these fitness influencers are legitimately five foot four to five foot six. I'm five foot 10 with a six foot one wingspan. There's really no way to limit your range of motion besides one, using more and more of an arch. And a lot of guys don't have the flexibility for that. The other thing you can do is simply get bigger. So you can cut your range of motion down by default because your torso takes up more space on the bench. But even with all these adjustments, there is simply no way that you're going to have the leverage advantage of the guys who are shorter with stubby arms. And this ties into the next genetic factor here, which is chest insertions. And this is something that is very, very overlooked, but it has a huge impact. So you might know somebody that always has had a barrel chest, even at a young age, right? Their chest is thick, their pecs are full, they connect all the way down the middle. In these cases, this person, at least in this aspect, has a genetic advantage on the bench press. The most famous example of this is going to be Arnold. You can look at pictures of his chest to this day. To this day! The craziest pecs in bodybuilding, I don't think we're ever going to see them replicated. For a more modern example, you can think of Alex Eubank. Now, the more muscle fibers you have in a given area, the more size and strength potential you have there. So some guys have pecs that insert very low onto their torsos. Chris Bumstead's a good example of that. His chest is just very, very big in terms of overall surface area. Other guys have chests that insert much higher. And think about, too, the level of gap between your chest. So guys like Arnold has talked about have the extreme example on the good side, where there's barely a gap at all. They essentially connect all the way down. Most guys are going to have a small to medium sized gap in the middle, and then their pecs are going to connect as they ride up. Some guys, though, have a very big gap in the middle, and their chest may not connect at all, and they may even have sort of muscle insertions to where they ride up at an angle, resulting in less overall muscle mass potential in this area. There's nothing you can do about this besides grow your overall chest as much as you can. So if you're somebody that has a hollow chest, a bird chest, maybe you even have pectus excavatum if you suffer from that, you're going to struggle more with the bench press than the average guy who also struggles with it pretty heavily. And the next thing to consider here are the hands and the wrists. So in my experience, the people with big calves without ever training them almost always have big thick wrists at the same time. You remember whenever people used to joke that they're not fat, they're big boned? There is a grain of truth to that because some people simply have larger bones and skeletons than others. Thicker wrists and bigger hands are going to allow you to get a better grip on the bar, which is going to improve stabilization on this exercise, which is going to, even if indirectly, result in a better time on the bench press. And the last thing here is a muscle fiber type, which you have no way to really know by just looking at somebody. But once you see them lift or do any sort of athletics, it becomes pretty clear. The people who become high level athletes and very, very strong when they're younger, maybe they might even make it into the pros or amateur level sports. They tend to be what's called fast twitch dominant, basically meaning they have muscle fibers that fire at very high speeds, allowing them to lift explosively, jump high, run fast, 
all that other stuff. And a lot of guys who are fast twitch dominant, they tend to hit one rep maxes with more speed. It may look like they barely struggled even if they did because their muscle fibers click so fast. And in terms of maxing out, the more fast twitch dominant you are, I'd say the higher your absolute one rep max potential is going to be, or at least the easier time you're going to get with maxing out. And we mentioned Andrew Eubanks a moment ago. Let's return to him as an example. Because given how full his chest is, a lot of people assume automatically he can bench 315, which I think he did while hip thrusting the whole time and bouncing the bar off his chest. Given what we saw in this clip, his actual one rep max with controlled form is probably around 270, 275 or so. But here's why a guy like Alex is going to struggle on the bench press, even though he does have the advantage of the big full chest. He has long arms. I mean, this dude is a turbo lanklet. And, as far as I can tell, he's pretty much always lean. And that is not going to help your cause either. If I'm not mistaken, he always talks about bulking to 200 pounds, then his ab anxiety flares up too much and he can't do it. That's how it's gonna go, man. And that ties into the next point here, gaining weight. Listen, man, I do not care what your favorite influencer told you or what you've seen them do, all right? Oh, well, he benches 315, bro. He's got a ripped up six pack, all natty. Let me know how that goes for you, big guy. One of the best ways to endlessly plateau on the bench is to not gain weight. So the bench press for most guys is very slow in general, especially once you get your novice gains milked out and you can't add a plus five to the bar every single week. That's already a slow process. You're going to completely put your foot on the brake if you combine that with not eating. If you're an average height guy, for example, and you're always in the range of like 150 to 170 pounds, and you're not a genetic mastodon for this lift, you may struggle to ever cleanly hit 225. A lot of dudes who finally bench 300, or if they get there relatively quickly, they weigh 250 pounds, 260, 270. So their body weight ratio ultimately is not really even that impressive. And on top of that too, the bench press is one of the most notorious exercises for dropping sometimes very noticeably, when you cut. I've talked about my experience with this before too, and a lot of the newer lifters can't mentally wrap their head around this. At the peak of my last bulk, my bench was up to 225 for eight, and I was doing very controlled reps. By the time I finished my cut, I was down to 225 for three. And by the way, guys, that's one of the easiest fake natty tells when they say stuff like, oh, well, I just don't lose any strength whenever I cut, mainly on the bench press, Especially if they're hitting bench press and other pressing PRs while they're cutting. Okay, so why does this drop in the bench press happen when you cut? And why is it more pronounced than a lot of other lifts? Well, first, the more weight you drop, the worse that your leverages get. So even an inch or two makes a big difference in terms of strength output. So as you cut down and you drop water weight, drop some body fat, your torso gets thinner. That means the bar has to travel farther to hit your chest. And number two, and this is somehow controversial in modern fitness, mass moves mass. So this is one of the oldest lifting truths. It might as well be written on a stone tablet. And this is a basic law of science ultimately. But still, the weak noobs always wanna argue against this. They always go into some convoluted diatribe about how gaining some body fat has zero benefit for muscle and strength. Some of them even say that body fat hinders your performance, and you may actually even get weaker if you gain some fluff. Even though you can look at any general powerlifting meet and easily disprove that, or bodybuilders in their off-seasons, or athletes in their off-seasons, or anybody else, but they still won't believe you. And sure enough, one of these guys was waxing poetic in my comment section the other day about this topic. We're gonna read this brief exchange and look into the mindset of the perma recomp guys, the main gainers. This is just very amusing. He's one of these guys that doesn't use any punctuation either. False information, muscle moves weight, not body fat. There's not one reason why body fat in excess, once again, of course he goes to in excess, needs to be on the body nor does it benefit the body. Yeah, you're right, you're not gonna be able to put on 20 pounds of muscle in three months with zero body fat, but it may take three years to put on lean muscle of the exact same weight over three years. So it is actually a myth that you have to put on body fat to increase muscle size. Okay. And I reply, you have no idea what you're saying. 
He says, can you explain to me how putting on body fat moves muscle then? He then says, my physique literally proves you wrong. You're the one telling people on the internet that you're supposed to put on body fat and you have to lose your abs, apparently, to put on muscle when all you need to do is go to the gym and break it down. It's very simple. Body fat does not benefit the body in any way. I've literally been training two and a half years now. Keep that in mind, two and a half years training. And I've gotten bigger noticeably, and every single of my lifts has increased. Body fat has not increased one bit. So it's a myth, sorry that you're, Y-O-U-R, misinformed. He then replies again, he's basically talking to himself, that's what I thought, so stop spreading misinformation, and if you still don't believe me, I could literally show you my physique and show you that I've gotten objectively bigger. I would hope so after two and a half years. And that all my lifts have increased by over 40 to 50 pounds. Once again, I'd hope so after two and a half years. And my body fat has stayed single digit all year round, so it's a myth. He then again says, sorry, you're misinformed. And I say, increased body fat doesn't, quote, move muscle. It provides better leverages, it creates more cushion for muscles to work around, and the increased energy allows you to lift more. This is Lifting 101. I'm sure your physique would prove me wrong, lol. He says, my physique would prove you wrong because you're stating that body fat needs to be put on the body for noticeable strength increase, which is actually horseshit. It's a myth, sorry you're misinformed. He keeps saying that. If you have to put on body fat to get stronger, then why have all my lifts increased by 40 to 50 pounds? I think he has Alzheimer's. With no body fat increase, answer that and staying under 10% body fat. I say, you're probably 13-15% to 15 body fat and think you're 7% on top of being in your novice phase. He says, again, false. Fat is an excess of energy stored on your body. Muscle is living tissue, therefore muscle moves weight, not body fat. He says, if that were the case, anybody could just put on excess body fat and supposedly have increased leverages, and they would get exponentially stronger. Not true. A certain amount of muscle tissue needs to be on the body to move a certain amount of weight. I say, you just proved my point. Fat is stored energy. Yes, which is why bodybuilders, bulk, and powerlifters perform better at higher body fats. Keep trying. Then I ask, what are some of your lifts at? And your height slash weight? I'd like video proof of your remarkable results. He then says, I'll legitimately show you progress pictures. Once again, he says, all my lifts have gone up 40 to 50 pounds, and my bench, especially since 2021 to 2023, has gone up almost 80 pounds and a 10% body fat. So now he's at 10%, not below it. It's a myth you have to increase body fat to get stronger. I say, why won't you answer how much you bench press or how much you do for any other lift or your height weight? 80 pounds over the course of two years for a novice, which you undoubtedly are, is not impressive. You'd gain much more size and strength if you weren't scared to eat. If you had good numbers, you would have shared them long ago. I'm sure you look good in your close-up mirror pictures when lean, but you do not have any serious amount of muscle. You'll realize I'm right eventually. And then he finally comes clean. He says, I'm bench pressing my body weight for reps, which is 130 pounds. Two and a half years of training, guys. He benches 130. We're gonna move on now, but that leads into the final point I want to cover here. Do not obsess over maxing out. So especially if you fit all these criteria, or a lot of them, that we've talked about, you may have a big goal in mind on the horizon. Whether it's even a 185 bench, 225 is a big one for a lot of dudes, maybe even 275 or you're up to the 300, 315 range, you've got the goal in mind, you want to hit it. And you decide to do this by trying the same weight over and over and over, in spite of you constantly failing. So you fail this week. You're like, all right, bro, I'm going to do a high carb meal next time and carb up. Then I'll hit it. You still fail. After that, okay, I'm going to do the high carb meal and an extra scoop of pre-workout, bro. You still fail. The reality is that you simply don't have the strength to lift that weight yet, and you're not going to somehow motivate your way or caffeinate your way into doing so. And sure, you can cheat on your form and claim that it counted, or your friend can spot you when he rows as much as you bench, these don't ultimately count, and you know it. You may pretend otherwise to appease your ego, but deep down, you know the truth. And I've made this mistake too, guys. Nobody's immune to it, especially when you have that goal in sight, and it's close. But do not deviate from the program that got you close, just because you're close. You still haven't crossed the finish line. And in a lot of cases, if you follow your routine, that 1RM you're going for, you'll probably end up doing that for reps, it might take an extra two months or so, maybe three months, but you're eventually going to do that and surpass it with clean form, with consistency, 
and even more reps than just one if you can just stick with the routine that you're doing as opposed to deviating off the path just because you want to hit it right now. If the routine you're following calls for maxes on whatever basis that it does and it's well structured, then listen to that. But don't start pounding your head against the wall every single week trying the same weight over and over. I can promise you it's not going to work out in most cases. And if you guys are looking for routines to better guide you in the gym, to make more gains in less time, get big and get strong, and not overcomplicate it like you see online a lot of the time, check out the links down below, revivalfitness.org slash programs. We've got multiple routines for novices and intermediates. When it comes to the bench, it's like any other exercise. Don't only do that, also think of your assistance, accessories. So do other things for your chest, maybe incline, that has a lot of carryover. For myself, the overhead press doesn't really have much carryover in my experience. You may find for yourself that it does, but do some single joint stuff for the triceps. Also improve your back to have a more solid base to bench from. Really just building up your body in general, especially in those target areas. You're going to get better at the bench, even if you don't do it all the time. But that's it for me guys, thank you for watching. Leave a like and share it with a friend if you enjoyed it. You can get in direct contact with me down below for questions about your own training and eating, as well as saving some money on great products and services. And I will catch you guys next time.